First two, everybody goes. Just picture yourself riding in the front seat, the front right seat, as an officer. And so you're going to be tasked with the responsibility of making that initial scene size up. There's a lot that goes into it. You can't be excited. First thing, you've got to remain calm. That can be difficult. You've just run to the apparatus. You're racing down the street. You've got your lights blaring, siren going. Uh, your heart rate's elevated. You're putting your gear on, getting all ready. And then you're going to have to do that initial assessment. And so we want it to be calm. We want it to be so that everybody can understand. Picture an officer that gets there and, and all they're doing is screaming. And we had a call one day. I was running second due with an engine company. And the, the first due officer gets on there and all you heard was screaming. In fact, the battalion chief got on the air and said uh, to that particular company, uh, turn your siren off and give me that size up again. Well, that was the officer. That's not what we want to do. Every, Everybody needs to understand you and you need to remain calm when you're given that initial scene size up. A good initial scene size up begins the moment that the call comes in. As, that, as those bells go off, you have to start thinking, where am I going? What type of structure is it? What time of daytime? Who is my crew that is with me? What are their capabilities? What am I tasked to do? Am I an engine company, truck company? All these things should be racing through your mind, listening to the dispatch, listening to every possible uh, thing going on. If you have time to be able to look at the notes to see you can gain as much information. And then comes the moment of truth. You pull up on the scene and as you're coming to that scene, you should be looking out your front window. You should be taking everything in and you should be giving a good size up. Don't say what you think you see Tell people what you see. What I mean by that is, and, and I had a great lieutenant that told me that uh, when I first became a lieutenant, and uh, he gave the example of uh, one day the company I was assigned to on another shift was driving down the road, and they saw a huge column of smoke. And so the officer said, hey, we got multiple buildings off. Go ahead and strike the second alarm. He wasn't even on the scene yet. When they pulled to the scene and uh, 360 was done, the units in the rear came in and said, hey, we got a pile of tires in the rear not even into the building and so uh, it, he didn't look so good uh, striking that second alarm so only tell people what you see that initial uh, assessment is going to be painting a picture for everybody else as they're computing that information that you already have now they're going to add to their brain what you're saying so that they can be prepared for when they get on the scene for whatever task is going to be assigned to them and so uh, obviously you want to let people know that you're on location uh, what side of the building are you on? Uh, a, B, C, or D, right? So Alpha, Bravo, uh, Charlie, Delta, and uh, where, uh, where you are. That's important for, for other people as they're coming in, uh, especially in Washington, D.C. First and third went to the front, second and, and uh, fourth went to the, to the rear. And so by saying uh, Engine 11 is on the scene, side A, you've established side A and you've established where you are. Then you're going to want to let people know what type of building is it. Is it uh, uh, type one, two, three, or four? So what we mean by that is it wood frame? Is it ordinary, which is uh, brick exterior with wood interior? Is it uh, non-combustible? Is it uh, is it um, fire resistive? Is it heavy timber? So people need to know that. And uh, if you serve in a department where that haven't been taught that, I don't know why, but make sure you're clear in what you're you're saying so that they understand. If you say you go on the scene with type three and people have no idea what type three is, you're not giving a good initial scene size up. But, so then after that, what do you see, right? So uh, your location, uh, what type of building you have responded to, and what do you see? Fire coming out of one window uh, from the alpha side. Uh, this whole heavy fire thing, uh, we used to make fun of that. What is heavy fire? Is that, is that fire that is coming out a window and it's so heavy it's dropping to the ground? 
But let people exactly know what you have. If you have, if you say you have fire show inside A alpha, then that should mean the entire A alpha is on fire, and everything that you see on that side is on fire. Uh, let them know: is it is it fire on the second floor, fire on the first floor? Which uh, quadrant? Again, what you see. Uh, is it smoke? What kind of smoke? All these things are important uh, to uh, let the other companies know what is going on. And then, what is your water supply? If you're an engine company, did you lay out? Did you not lay out? Uh, what what do you what do you have for water supply? And then, lastly, what are your needs? What are the needs going to be? Uh, you know, so you could say engine tens on the scene side A got a two story uh, wood frame single family home. We have fire showing on the number two floor uh, from the alpha side with people trapped on the two uh, on the second floor Bravo side. And so now you painted a picture. So companies coming in, the ladder companies can get their ladders off, or or uh, the rescue company can get in there and start searching while while you're putting the fire out. You've painted a very good picture. Now, this sounds easy standing in front of a camera, but if your heart is racing, how do you do that? How do you get proficient at giving that good initial scene size up? And that takes practice. And I like to tell everybody, you need to practice on the small ones to get proficient. You know, people uh, might mock you or might laugh at you, especially if you're in a smaller department and, and you're given that scene size up. But if you go through each step every time, and then criticize yourself. How did I do on that one? Well, I blew it. I forgot to. I forgot to tell them what my water supply is. Oh, I blew it because uh, I didn't tell them what side I was on. And and you realistically on all these calls, you go over and over and over again uh, what you did. And then uh, by the time you get it so that it's second nature, you can do it at two o'clock in the morning. When that big one comes in, you're already prepared. You know what to say. You can do it without thinking, because we want to be quick. We don't want this to be a lengthy report where you know you're taking up so much time you want to give the report and then get to work whatever you're assigned to do so um, also it should be mindful that if the first do has not given a good scene size up there's nothing wrong with the second company coming in giving a good scene size up or the chief but everybody needs to know what they're what they're working on because if you're working on a, a wood frame structure fire on the first floor uh, you should immediately be thinking if you're Companies coming in, okay, uh, am I a backup line? So I want to back up the company, make sure the fire is knocked down. I want to check for extension above. That should be just your automatic thinking. So a good size up will get you thinking that way. Uh, so, so work on it, be proficient at it, and you will see that uh, if you're calm and delivering it, and then uh, you get those first lines, and that set the stage for the entire fire will go much better than if you're chaotic and have no idea or don't even tell people what, what is going on. So let me ask you a personal question. If another firefighter or first responder were tasked with the assignment of checking out your faith and giving a size up, what would they say? Would they say there's heavy faith showing? Doing, you're doing a lot of things, going to your local church, reading your Bible around the, the station, encouraging others? Or would they look at your life and say nothing is showing? When Paul wrote the book of Romans, he had the idea that we should have a transformational life. In other words, we shouldn't be like the world. We should be separate. We should be distinct. We should be different. And so check out what he said in Romans chapter 12 and verse 2. It says, Do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewal of your mind, that by testing you, you may discern what is the will of God, what is good and acceptable and perfect. So you see, firefighters and first responders, our faith should have evidence. We should be doing things so that others can see. We should be transformed, not the way we used to be, but the way we are in Christ now. And Paul would encourage us to do that. He would encourage us to do that every time we go to the station, every time we meet with firefighters, being the best firefighter we can. But there should be evidence that we have faith. People should see us reading our Bibles. People should see us going to church. We should be talking about it. It should just be coming out of us like it is uh, natural for us. And so we shouldn't be ashamed of the gospel of Christ. So next time you go to your firehouse, work on your faith. Make sure that people are seeing it. So that if somebody had to do that size up, they would say, yes, there is a lot showing. Perhaps you might be saying, yeah, that's great, Craig, but I don't even have a faith. I don't even know where to begin. I don't know how to separate that. I go to church once in a while. I may bring out my Bible, but I really don't know. Might I encourage you, 
to go to our website, www.fellowshipofchristianfirefighters.org. Check out our resources, Bible studies, daily devotions, articles. These things were written by firefighters and for firefighters. They got nice pictures. They keep our interest. We have videos on there, things to help you grow in your faith. Uh, why not take one of the Bible studies, grab somebody at your station, and study it together. See what you could learn. See what uh, God would have for you. Or you can even download our free app, Christian Firefighter Hub. Just go to your Play Store. It's free. Download it today. It has all of those same resources on there. It has our live stream for Firehouse Chapel. You can get on there every Sunday at 4 o'clock with other firefighters. And it keeps you on the cutting edge of knowing what's going on uh, in the faith in the fire service. So uh, start there or you can contact us. Uh, my email is fcfimissionary at gmail.com. I'd love to help you out, give you those resources, help you grow in your faith, help you to transform into the firefighter that God would have you to be. Thanks for tuning in and uh, may God continue to bless you as you daily walk with him.